What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video once again You can't get rid of me. We are back for another F1 2020 career mode episode. This is number 10 We're into double digits now for the French Grand Prix. I think we're at now uh, Go check out the previous episode if you haven't already the Canadian Grand Prix pretty good episode But uh, we move to the next round of the championship acclaim is building we're nearing on uh, team acclaim level 10 That'll be a game changer for us, I feel, as we'll be able to bring on a third sponsor to the team. And we're just going to capitalize on this snowball of momentum that we seem to be building ever since the Monaco Grand Prix. Um, momentous race there, just in case people who are watching haven't seen it. Ever since then, I think we've been getting points uh, most races. So it's been nice to be competitive and in the fight. And uh, hopefully, long may it continue. I hope there isn't some kind of breakaway mid-season development race that the AI just go ham with. And we can continue to stay with them. I would like to have been in a better position, maybe upgrade. Oh, how can I say that? I, we have been making good progress. But I feel like I feel like we're not fully maximizing it. We could have capitalized on a few upgrades that failed maybe a little earlier on. I should have maybe caught that out a little bit. Upgraded the quality control of the facilities a little bit earlier and things could have been better um, which is the scary thing but regardless we're gonna move forward uh, front wing upgrade we're just getting everything come in spark plug upgrade so that's an engine upgrade noise and g-force training for Mick Schumacher we're continuing to support him be on the car but we do need to make a decision weekend. as to what the future is going to be for the second half of the season and where we go uh, second driver wise I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of up in the air at the moment. I still don't know whether I want to keep Mick on board or go for someone cheaper with maybe better stats or I don't know, maybe build up some cash and then see who we can get. But I, I think I'm leaning more towards keeping Mick for the entire season. That's kind of where I stand at the moment. But we'll see how we go. We do need to upgrade the car. We do need to get a better engine. That's one thing that is uh, kind of lacking and I don't think is lending itself too well to my teammate. Being able to get through the field, qualifying is is, is decent, but the race car I feel actually is better than uh, what we can manage over one lap pace. Uh, a quick little development there for the weight reduction, which was a failed upgrade uh, in the week leading up to this race now. And you can see the development race is a very close one. A couple breakaways there, we got racing points. Uh, with some big boy upgrades and also Mercedes who are extending their lead in the I don't know what you would call that in the development race I suppose they're probably extending it in the drivers standings as well or not I think I feel like Ferrari have won a lot of races we'll have to check back on that but regardless here we are for Friday practice in the French Grand Prix this is always going on ahead uh, in the background even though I don't really record this all too much and show you guys but it is always being worked on you can see our first power unit was uh, it's coming to the end of its life it was at 87 percent in this practice session this might be the last time we use PU number one but um, we collect all of the resource points there we simulate practice two and three and then the engine is kaput it is at 92 percent and by rule or regulation we or safety measures i don't know we're not allowed to use engine uh internal combustion engine one anymore so we have to uh take a new one but uh, i was planning on taking a new one anyway what we're going to do for this weekend is we're going to take a, a strategy where we chuck in a brand new engine for qualifying and that is so that we can use up the third column of power unit parts but then for the race what we're going to do is we're going to chuck in the fourth lot of uh, internal combustion or power unit components and we're going to take a grid penalty for this race. So it's uh, a necessary sacrifice that we need to make and the French Grand Prix is the most obvious choice out of any of the races that we've got coming up. I did say Germany <laughs> in the last episode we were going to take new engines. Silly me, there is no Germany this year. So uh, yeah, that would be nice to take all the engine components at Germany and not serve a, uh, a grid penalty. But no, that's not the case. We're taking it here and I feel like overtaking will be pretty easy to, to do around here. We'll use the power of the fresh engine as well to catapult us up the grid. And so as we head into qualifying here, I'm not going to be 
pushing overly hard to get out of this session. Yes, I'll give it a couple of cracks, but if we're if we're down the back, which is where we are, then I'm not going to be too bothered about that because we're going to have a, a 60 place grid penalty for this race. So I'm not going to put any unnecessary strain on otherwise relatively unreliable components that we have in the back of our car. So we're going to go out for one more run and we're going to see if this will get us out of Q1. Uh, the sole reason why I'm actually doing this to see if I can get out of Q1 is really just for the rivalry purposes of beating Pierre Gasly and getting some points over him on there. We did lose to Danny Kvyat uh, in the first rivalry, so I would like to get some driver acclaim and uh, this is one step towards doing that. Across the line, we... Uh, the line has been moved, I feel like. The line is a lot further along uh, in this year's French Grand Prix, I think. Unless I'm going crazy, um, which I don't think I am. But uh, what I am today is slow. It's P19 for the French Grand Prix. This has always been a tough track for the player. However, we do get the edge over our teammate, Mick Schumacher. But I feel like that might be more or less down to absolutely fresh power unit components. We'll see in the race, though, how things unfold. But uh, we always, I don't know, I feel like we do have better race pace than what we do qualifying pace. Our straight line speed isn't the greatest, so it's uh, it's a little bit more difficult for Mick to overtake people. But we shall see. Some long straights here, big DRS zones, heavy tire wear can be the case sometimes. A lot of long high speed corners. We do have a tire wear upgrade applied to our car, so there will be an advantage uh, for us compared to other people. But uh, we'll have to wait a long way into the race to see the benefits of that. But it's race time for the French Grand Prix. So, unfortunately, we've picked up some grid penalties. And we'll be starting further back than you expect. As for how bad it is, that'll depend on what the other drivers get. Here we are once more at the Le Castellet circuit for another round of this year's Formula One World Championship. Renault took their first French Grand Prix win all the way back in the inaugural race in 1906, but it was another 73 years before they could take their second. So they'll be pushing hard to delight the local fans here today. All right then, so here we are for the French Grand Prix, starting what I would assume would be at the back. If anything, with a 60 place grid penalty, we'll be more likely starting on the moon. But here we are. Let's just have a run through of the grid, see if there's anyone who is worse off than me. Absolutely not. I don't know why I checked. So, here we are. For the race, looks like the one-stop strategy is the way to go. I am, however, not going to trust the game, and I'm going to figure that out for myself. Turns out the game was alright, so... <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't hurt to check, and uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Lowering the fuel load to um, save the engine a little bit. I prefer running in lean revs through corners. Um, it puts less stress for the tires, it puts less stress through the car and the engine, and overall, it's just the way to go about things. Away we go for the French Grand Prix. We've been left for dead off the start, as per usual, but if we head into turn one, that's when we will be in the fight once more, nearly drilling the back of Nicolas Latifi there. That wouldn't have been a good start to the Grand Prix. You might have noticed it's very cloudy today, so those conditions will favor us once again as we get the golden run up against the Williams. Can we get one of the harsh drivers of Kevin Magnussen following our teammate Linus Stern? We might shortchange him here up the inside. Sorry, Mick, but if there's a gap, you've got to go for it. That's something that you need to learn. And that'll come with experience. Let's hopefully boost that up for him. His uh, stats really need some padding, don't they? The only thing that's decent on Mick Schumacher's overall stats is his pace. But uh, in a car like this, it is hard to showcase said pace. But either way, Slipstream on Grosjean. We dive up the inside and nearly drill the back of uh, Antonio Giovinazzi there into the middle sector chicane. We will get a replay of that uh, later on once the race calms down a little bit. But that was very, very close by all accounts. <laughs> we move on. And uh, Gio looking pretty pacey at this stage. We are going to dive bomb him at the earliest opportunity. We do not want to give an Alfa Romeo any chances to get settled in a Grand Prix because we know how difficult they are to overtake as we lose the back end there on the curb. The car is still relatively unbalanced in terms of its uh, overall downforce setup. We have more front downforce upgrades applied to the car than what we do rear downforce. So that's an issue which needs to be addressed in the medium term future. Here's the replay of the start of the first lap. That was a big boy dive bomb on Roman Grosjean, but uh, we just now managed to clear him there and not run into 
the Alfa Romeo ahead. He actually nearly clipped me as well on the run into the corner. But uh, good driving from all involved there. This is the dive on Giovinazzi. He turned in on me a little bit there and forced me way up onto the curb. But it was a forceful move from me. And I fully accept the risk of whatever happens there. We've got a chance that when we're in a car like this. We need to take all of our chances. But um, we move. Lap four. Uh, we are under pressure from Gio. He has a little look there into the chicane. But thankfully, we deploy enough of our battery to edge in front and stay there. But uh, this is another dive. <laughs> That's on the Alpha Tauri, the Alpha Tauri of Danny Kvyat, former rival. We get past him, and uh, we can now set our sights after his teammate. I'm being very aggressive off this start. I'm utilizing the pace of this brand new power unit to good effect. And uh, I'm not taking any prisoners here in this French Grand Prix. Now sizing up. Uh, Gasly around the outside of turn one. That was a lot less of a contentious move, but more of a traditional one. There we go. Well, around the outside of turn one isn't exactly traditional, but there was a lot less risk in that move than any of the other moves I pulled off so far in today's race so far. But anyway, it's lap five. People are already diving it in. We've got Red Bulls, uh, Racing Points, uh, one of the McLarens is in. This is uh, very early stops from the boys here. This might result in a two-stop for these people who started on the softs. That's one thing I didn't consider. I just thought it was a, a one-stop for everybody. Uh, softs the hards, maybe, for the top 10 runners. But, um, yeah, they're all on. They're all switching to mediums, and mediums will not make it to the end of the Grand Prix from here. So we might be on an absolute banger of a strategy here, depending on how things unfold. At the moment, we're in the slipstream of Lando Norris, um, basically just nabbing his DRS and saving a little bit of fuel and not pushing the tires overly much, as you see, we lost the back end there. Um, we're just running at his pace, and he is dragging us along in this Grand Prix very handily indeed. We've gapped Pierre Gasly by 2.6 seconds. Giovinazzi, three seconds back. Team Radio. Thanks, Jeff. Helpful as always. We now follow on board with uh, Giovinazzi. He is now getting overtaken by Valtteri Bottas, who has freshly come out of the pits, and he's on soft compound tires. Very interesting strategy there. So is he going soft, soft, medium, or maybe even soft, soft, hard? Soft, soft, hard doesn't make sense. You'd want to avoid the hard if, you, if, if at all possible, especially if you're running a two-stop. But either way, we're coming into the pits at the end of this lap. We are going to box for the hards ourselves. And I would imagine that Lando would probably follow suit in this Grand Prix. In we go to the pit lane. And uh, this is Marduk Motorsport versus McLaren. We have been traditionally very good on the pit stops. So I would be very proud of the boys if we can jump McLaren here. A Ferrari is in as well. That was Leclerc. No, it was Vettel. But he's already made this stop and he is well clear of us. So the McLaren is in for their stop. We're in for ours. Hopefully we can jump them. A bit of a delay changing the tyres. And that was all the difference. 2.7 second stop. And we slot in behind Lando for the time being. This is the pack that is immediately in front of us. This is Carlos Sainz, uh, Ricardo, both the Renaults, and uh, then just behind this car here is Lando. However, coming out of the pit lane, we lost a lot of time to Lando. So perhaps the tire is not firing up massively off the start, but also just as soon as I left the pit lane, I was like over a second behind him. So maybe I got held a little bit longer than what I should have in the, in the box. But either way, I, I think we will catch back up to Lando if we've got the pace. He might get, he might even get held up by the people in front of him if uh, they're slow enough. But uh, we saw my teammate make a pit stop. He has emerged well behind us. And uh, these were the effective race leaders prior to their second stop. Leclerc and Bottas uh, right in the mix here with us. But we know that this won't last too long as they're on fresh medium compound tyres in much faster cars. There's absolutely no point in even trying to fight this. So what I'm doing is I'm turning the engine down. I'm not even fighting it. I'm just letting it happen and I'm going to get Leclerc slipstream and we're not going to battle into a braking zone or a corner because that's only going to cost us both time. League racing strats right here. And uh, it looks like it's paid off because Leclerc caught up to Norris and they're all starting to battle and uh, we can continue life as we were. Well inside the top 10 now as a lot of people are making their final stop of the Grand Prix. 10 to go. And it looks like we are 
maybe a little bit stronger in this second half of the race compared to Lando Norris. I was really struggling, if anything, to keep up with him. But now, I feel like I've got the pace to actually overtake him as we see more pit stops in this Grand Prix. This is Alexander Albon making his final stop onto medium compound tires. He will emerge quite a long way behind me, so we may just about be able to finish in front of the Red Bull. I hope that Giovinazzi can hold him up as long as possible. We've got the ideal candidate for that. Hopefully the Alpha is just a rocket ship in a straight line. Meanwhile, we're battling Lando Norris here around the outside into the middle sector, and we pull it off. Now, can we get anything more in this Grand Prix? Who's up next? Oh, it's Leclerc. We're P5. <laughs> um, yeah, we're not getting anything more out of this Grand Prix unless people retire. Leclerc is a long way up the road and is continuing to march forward in this Grand Prix. The absolute maximum, I would say, is where we are currently. But it's not settled yet because here comes Lando up the inside with uh, the help of DRS. We maintain our composure. Let me hold on to the position. We're still a lap down on fuel, though. But uh, don't worry, I am constantly working on that. The, the Honda is actually pretty handy in terms of fuel consumption. Uh, just run it in standard or even lean revs, and you can save a lot of fuel very quickly. That's why I've been underfueling the car so much, so I don't have to burn so much fuel. I don't have to run the engine enriched so much. It has been looking after the engine a little bit better. Um, so it's uh, it's handy. It just allows us to run at a faster pace as well because the car is lighter. We're probably saving uh, a tenth or two a lap just by having a lighter car. But now we have a McLaren. That is not Lando Norris. That is Carlos Sainz a little further down in the pack out with an engine issue himself. So interesting stuff there. Thankfully no safety car. To be honest, I didn't want a safety car with this scenario because it would have allowed Albon and Verstappen. Verstappen is behind us somehow, so he's done a two-stop as well. But I'm really surprised to see him behind his teammate right now. Very interesting scenes. We've got five laps to go. We're looking. It's a pretty precarious position we find ourselves in because these Red Bulls are going to be massively fast, and the gap is literally nothing. I'm going to have to get the elbows out here if I want to maintain this position. Let's see if we can maybe turn defense into attack and maybe get in front of Lando and then let Lando deal with the Red Bulls and if possible they'll squabble and I'll just pull away in this Grand Prix, but I don't know, it's tough. We, me and Lando seem to have quite similar pace at this stage. It's, it's, it's actually very hard to pull out of the DRS and that's why um, we're kind of glued to each other at this point in the Grand Prix. Let's see if we can get in front of Lando this time. I'm going to put it up into Rich and then overtake. We don't have much battery to play with. But we're going to deploy all of it in an effort to get past Lando here. Here comes uh, Albon on our left-hand side. It's going to be three wide down the back straight. Let's see if we can come out on top. Uh, Alex is on the inside, but we have Lando himself on the inside of me. We do get Lando, squeeze him out, and that we are back up into P5 with uh, Max just having to watch way off in the background. Here's the replay of it all kicking off here. Lando was the sandwich in the middle, and we just... Just get our nose in front. The fact that we edged him onto the curb there meant he couldn't fully get onto the power, and uh, that was very cheeky from us there. Well, we've got it done. Team radio from Lando. Screw you! And there we go. That's confirmation that he wasn't happy about that exchange between the two of us. Now, here's Max Verstappen. Out of all this, Max has just run into the back of his teammate Albon. Uh, because he had to check up for me and Lando going side by side into the chicane. So front wing damage for Verstappen. This is me getting my thumbnail and I thought this was very interesting and worth showing you guys. We actually have some damage that I don't know about. We actually have some floor damage on the right hand side. I have seen, you know, instances where damage can happen in um, unorthodox areas and this is one of them on the floor. I don't know, well I don't feel like it was affecting my car, but it could very well be. I have also noticed, uh, I think on 2019 or 2018, one time I had a, a bit of a shark bite out of the uh, upright of one of my rear, wi uh, of my rear wing. I think it was Austria in, in the McLaren, and uh, that did affect me. But I feel like the pace here is absolutely fine from, from what I can feel. But it is, it is kind of cool to see floor damage there. It would be cool for, for Cody's in the future to continue to work on the damage model in future F1 games, but that was 
a big audacious lunge around the outside from Albon. Thankfully, we managed to hold on. Here he comes up the inside into turn one. It's side by side. We have to leave the space. It's uh, very, very awkward as we lose the back end going over the roller coaster ride of the first chicane. But uh, we do manage to hold on just about Albon up our inside. We, we chose to let him go there. Why? DRS is why. And, uh, well, he was already on my inside, so uh, I wasn't going to fight it too hard. But we're going to get the Supreme and hopefully a bit of DRS back on Albon. We don't have a great run out of there, uh, which means that there's a, a, a larger than what is ideally wanted gap between the two of us. And so it's going to be difficult to close that as we head into the braking zone. It looks like Albon is going to keep the position. Max, meanwhile, made his stop on the last lap for a new front wing. That was very interesting choice of uh, strategy there from Red Bull, but each for their own. We continue to work away at Albon here as Lewis Hamilton just continues to flex the muscles out front. He heads on to the final lap of the Grand Prix. Albon isn't really getting away here, so we might be half a chance to get him back maybe. As we lose the back end massively through the middle sector, or third sector now it is, technically. Here's a couple of replays out the back of Albon's car, and jeez, that was hard to hold on to. Oh, not hard, it was, uh, it was, we had to be on to that early, but we caught it early enough to save it is kind of what I meant. I have had a lot of snaps of oversteer with this car uh, over the course of this season. They have been pretty catchable, to, to be fair, to the car. But um, here we go, side by side with Lando into the braking zone. We had to go really late on the brace to pull that off. And Lando actually leaves us a little bit more space than what we maybe left him a little earlier on in the Grand Prix. Maybe Lando needs to get a bit more aggressive, a bit more punchy, get his elbows out a bit more. Lewis Hamilton wins the French Grand Prix. We absolutely do not care about that. We're immersed in our own little world here against Lando. Let's see if we can stay in front of him. We've been locked in combat all year in 2020, whether it be virtual. Oh, it continues to be virtual, but uh, real life Lando or Lando bot, as it were. Uh, we can't be separated, it seems. Final couple of corners and we might just about hold on to P6 and eight points in this French Grand Prix out of the final corner. Let's punch it up to the line and claim those eight points. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh yes, points. <laughs> what? Penalty? Penalty for track limits. I was moving in a straight line. Yes, another historic win under their belts. Well done to the team at Mercedes. I'm completely gobsmacked at that. So, essentially, we got a penalty for corner cutting, even though we were on a straight. Corner cutting on a straight. How does that work? How is that even possible? I'll bring up a replay. But uh, we were literally just celebrating, coming up to the line. And that is cause for a penalty, is it? I mean, yeah, we, we put the car outside of the white lines, but I was just trying to greet the checkered flag. But um, how can that be... How can that be penalised? Thankfully, we only lose the one spot, but that is absolutely outrageous. I will appeal to the stewards and see if I can get that removed. But that is a kick in the teeth. Stewards had to come to that decision very quickly. Had to penalise me within half a second. They're really on it today. But so regardless, we still get points. P7, six points. Mick Schumacher moves forward in the Grand Prix. Not enough, though. Um, it is difficult. He isn't going to be lunging it like I am and being as aggressive on the first lap, which, which really helps. But um, need to work on that engine. Need to work on the drag reduction and... I'll have my teammate to support me. P7 in the Constructors standings. At the end of the day, what we need is P8 in the Constructors to meet the sponsor goal. Um, it has come to my attention that we do get bonuses for where we finish in the Constructors. So it's going to be of utmost importance to continue this momentum, not only in the uh, scoring of points, but also the research and development race to make sure that we naturally have the car pace to be consistently able to make the most of these races from here on in to the end of the season um and, and i need my teammate mick to to really help me with that and if anything if i could have him on board and scoring the odd point or two here or there 
that adds up at the end of the day. That takes away points from other teams and it, it slowly allows us to maybe catch those who are already in front of us, the likes of Renault and McLaren. So that's going to be the, the priority for the second half of this season. But um, with all that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more racing game content on F1 2020. Um, the support has been immense, and I am honestly so grateful. Let me know what you thought about the penalty down in the comments, whether you think that was justified or not. I've Really, the, the reason why you would get a penalty is for gaining an, an advantage, but there is absolutely no advantage to be gained there. Just my two cents. Until the next one, guys. I'll see you next time.